so welcome everyone to our Ask Us Anything, uh, AUA, I guess. Um, we're going to be talking about pretty much anything that you want. I will let you know that the chat's going to flow a little more freeform tonight. I'm going to pull up questions, and uh, we'll, we'll answer them as they come up. We might cycle back around to different topics. And I'm, I'm going to try, and last time I think we were uh, feeling compelled to answer things that appeared in chat as we were talking. Uh, I'm going to try and steer us away from that, because that's going to get chaotic in a hurry. Uh, so let's try to focus and, uh, yeah, and no make sure. Is I'm distracted. <laughs> <laughs> that is an issue. Um, but I'll, I'll try and keep us focused. Uh, I'll try and keep us on on track of one thing at a time. Uh, there's no real track for the evening. Uh, we'll just keep answering questions until we collapse or, or until we're done with questions. Um, I will probably collapse. I'm go play video games. I don't know about you. Well, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to be the the limiting factor because I'm two hours ahead of you guys, so that's uh, that's the way that's going to go. Um, yeah, but I was so, up at four thirty, so that's true. You are, <laughs> your schedule is completely uh, different from the rest of us. So. Yeah, you're from Canada. You don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. Why is she was up at? 430. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and introduce everybody. Uh, so I am Eric Simon. I am the community manager slash Kickstarter uh, manager slash many other things uh, for Ulysses North America. And I will hand it over to Daryl. Hey, I'm Daryl Hurst. I'm a developer. I also wear many hats, though I'm not wearing many hats at all right now. <laughs> um, and I'll pass it over to Deanna. I'm Reality Guru. Reality Guru. Oops. You know, that I've been told. And I'm kind of the lore keeper. And uh, oh, I think I might have an echo here. And uh, I'm also Daryl's black hat slash canary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make sure you don't have the Kickstarter page open. Uh, ah, so. Is that it? That yes, you can also put in there. Yeah. Maybe I'll just yeah. That's just reduce the volume a little bit there. Okay. All right. Uh, so rather than try and curate these in any kind of order. Uh, I'm just going to start posting uh, things for us to talk about, um, and uh, we'll we'll throw them to whoever seems appropriate at the time. Um, there will be some. I'm actually going to try and answer them. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we'll throw them to whoever's appropriate, and then I'll like just start talking. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, luckily, we could count on Daryl to fill any dead air. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's start with this one. Pascal uh, asks, with the focus on the acrylic tokens, do you plan to upgrade the cargo box and switch the cardboard tokens with their corresponding acrylic sets? Do you want to take that one, or shall I take that as a production thing? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, why don't you answer that one? So so our intent, and the funny thing was the, the acrylics were they came up very late in the process, essentially. You know, they were not part of the original plan, which is why there's been a little bit of scrambling around them. They're just cool, so we had to try. Um, the intent is, so for the blips, we're probably still going to do cardboard blips, I think, for the near future. We're not going to do cardboard counters anymore, which is why we doubled them up on this one and said, all right, you like cardboard counters, finish up now because they're they're gonna kind of go away <clears throat> in the near future. But I think there's a there's a good reason to have the cardboard blips as the, the sort of cheaper alternative. And, it, and it's kind of we, we have to do the art for them anyway to do the other blips. So mm -hmm. you know, might as well. And then we'll start. I think in the future Kickstarters, you'll see us doing a lot of the acrylic token unlocks as part of the stretch goals and adding them in on top. Whereas we kind of couldn't do that on this one because we were we were figuring them out. We didn't, we didn't know what it would take to get them. We didn't even know how many we have at the end. Right. The uh, the the big issue there was timing wise. We saw the prototypes before the Kickstarter. But we like didn't a week have, before. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have any uh, plan for how are we actually putting these into a product. Uh, so that that arrangement, we we were able to 
we had a couple of weeks into the Kickstarter itself to figure that out. <clears throat> and so that's, that's what we had to do. Um, uh, since it's a follow-up, I will go ahead and ask this. Will the new cardboard blips be single-sided? The, the new cardboard ones are still going to be double-sided, but we are going to be better about what we're doing with the two sides. So the lesson so learned that, from box one. Yeah. So we'll we'll be more conscientious about uh, sort of the effect uh, at the table of the that double siding. Um, well, I thought we were being super clever fixing them up, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, there's there's some discovery that goes on. Well, that'll that's a theme that will come up later uh, on some of these other questions. Um, Craig asks, uh, there are a few items currently not available as add-on. Will they be available? My in main interest is the Living Land character journals. How many are in the pack? But I'm curious about the novel, et cetera. Uh, so what I can tell you is there are some things that are not individually packaged for sale. Um, you know, Since nothing is Kickstarter exclusive, there are things that can become part of a larger product later, um, but they're not going to be add-ons with this Kickstarter because they're not packaged for individual sale. Uh, so that would include things like the uh, threat cards, the novelette, um, other things like that. Um, the character journal is sort of the one exception on that, but uh, Daryl, I had some questions for you, uh, and maybe you know, and maybe we don't. Uh, this is part of why it hasn't been determined yet. Um, but do we know what the character journal pack product looks like yet? Um, so a, the journal ex pack product, we, I mean, we know we're going to do it. Uh, we still have to talk to Marcus on exactly how it's going to go down. Right. So, uh, so a little background on that. Uh, we, there were some changes during the campaign last time. And <laughs> so, uh, so we ended up, uh, telling people, well, you can order these character journals and you can order the tear pad. And then those ended up in the same product. And that sort of messed us up in terms of, well, we we charged people for two different add-ons. So how do we do, with, do that? And I hope that everybody was happy with the fact that we just gave you two, uh, you know, we, we gave you both for each one that you ordered. Uh, so you should have a ton of tear sheets and uh, character journals right now if you ordered any add-ons uh, in the last Kickstarter. But we need to be a little more clear uh, on that uh, this time around. Yeah, and one of the things that we did differently this time is with the first one we did like the one journal for each cosm. And for Living Land, we're like, hey, if people like those, let's stack up the Living Land and let them have a bunch. Because I think if we ever do it, I mean, I mean, I know we're going to do it, but I think what's going to happen on the uh, the the journals for sale is they're they're going to be mixed type. Where mm -hmm. in Living Land, we're going to stack them up for thirty minutes. Yeah. So the so the what will definitely be available as an add-on in the Game On store is the the generic character journal pack, which has the eight cosms. Uh, you know, so one of each cosm plus the tear pad. Uh, so you can still get that as an add-on. Um, you know, there will be a bunch of the right. the individual products that are available as add-ons. And the other thing, you know, just keep asking us for what you want, because often we, we'll, you know, when, when we package stuff, it's it's based around like, well, you know, here's what makes sense to get this out at a price point that's going to be reasonable for people, like put it in a box, this and that. If a lot of people are like, man, what I really want is those character journals, tell us. And then we know, okay, we've got to figure out a way to get just those character journals out. So, yeah. You know, ask, ask and you shall receive at some point. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, that's a big thing. Um, the, the one that I didn't know, uh, and this had come up in some comments earlier, Daryl, is the uh, the year one map of North America. Do we have that as an add-on or is that... So right uh, now, we are not... Right now, we're... It's the, the year one map of North America is in the box. We don't have that as, as a separate one because the maps, just like last time, would go in the, the GM box, which is the, mm -hmm. hey, here's all the stuff that's kind of left over and we don't know what else where else to put it. So right, right. now it's you, you find it in the box or you can buy the GM box which has got all the other stuff that comes in the box that you like the tokens and things like that. So. 
Yeah, and the year the year one stuff is yeah that may be packaged in a different way later, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah we won't we won't have that map as an individual add on. Um, yeah, the day ninety well the day ninety map was was two maps technically, but but yeah that's um, uh, okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, so Sean. Uh, asked two questions, and <clears throat> the first question appears in both posts, but I'm going to post them separately. So here's the first one. Uh, so this is for both of you. Recalling releases for the original Torg, I am concerned about power creep, what I like to call last book out syndrome. <laughs> is there a plan to prevent the power level of characters built with each, each subsequent book from beating the crap out of characters from the previous ones? So... <laughs> You know, you want to do you want to start this one again? Yeah, I mean, we're we're aware of that. So <laughs> that that's sort of the plan is that we know that that happened, and uh, part of a lot of the changes that we made in the rules from original Torg were because of that. Um, we have a very set idea of what the damages of different weapons should be if it's a personal weapon, heavy weapon. Um, got an idea what the vehicle should be like, what magic spells should be like. I mean, it's a little bit fuzzy, but we've got we've got numbers already set. Well, and, it, and in fact, one of the things in the GM primer is a table with that scale. Yeah. So GMs, when you're making stuff up on the fly, it's like, hey, here's the basic rubric that we're using when we're making up new stuff, so you can kind of be on the same you know, lines. Yeah, like you'll notice that that there are basically, I think there's what one armor that's plus five, and that's one of the. It's a super special. Yeah, right? it's one of the sacred items in the in the living land. So. Well, well and the uh, a, a dwarven armor, if they extra perk it up, I think you get to. Can they do that? I can't remember. <laughs> that might have been. I know we talked about it at some point, but I don't remember that detail. Yeah, but basically, like personal armor tops out at five. Tank armor tops out around ten. One of the cool, so I didn't notice this until now, but I guess it shows in people back during this. So. Yes. Hi, David. <laughs> Thanks for backing. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then the other thing is one of the things that we did to address power cream, A, you probably heard me talk before, and we've kind of got a mandate, no new skills. You know, um, we're, we've got our list, and we've kind of got to work from it. There will be lots of new perks. But any new perks that we add are balanced around the initial set of perks. And some are some are better than others. I mean, that's going to happen. Your mileage may vary. But ones that are, you know, especially more powerful or more applicable or whatever, that's where the clearance levels come in. You know, so when you hit beta and it opens up, like, okay, so now here's. Here's some perks, and maybe they've got prerequisites, or maybe the only prerequisite is beta clearance. But you know, these are what people would consider like, ooh, that's kind of a power creepy perk. Well, you gotta be on this tier before you can get into that. And that's one of the other ways that we're addressing that. Because we want to do some really crazy cool stuff at the, at the top end. And so it's gonna have to expand out like that, like that. Especially when you gotta do things like Face or uh, or you know Doctor Mobius or, or whatever so you're, you're gonna need some pretty crazy abilities to handle. So those abilities yes. are gonna come along, but we're controlling their release through clearance levels and prerequisites. And since the perks, you know, are additive in their cost nature, <laughs> you know, after you've got you know four or five. Start getting very expensive. That <laughs> that becomes a limit in and of itself. So yeah, we've we've done a lot of tinkering with the mid game and the end game. You know, we we think we're we think we've got a damn good plan, but like every plan, it might in you know we might have to adjust as we go. That's that's part of what we do. Yep. Uh, all right. So Sean's second question is down here towards the bottom. Um, so, uh, is the plan to continue putting out world books in the same order as the original Torg, making the next one Nile Empire, I believe? Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, <we actually laughs> That's correct. Mix that. I, we're probably going to mix that up. Here's going to be our, our 
our first big spoiler of the year. Oh, you're gonna tell them this? I think I am. Yeah. So okay. we're t- one. Well, we're not. This is not a certainty, everyone. But we might insert in the order a uh, a new one that focuses on the core Earth and also has a big multi-cosm adventure in it. Because one of the things that I particularly liked about year one is I really like that they are you get to get your introduction to each of the different realms and really adventure in them and get a feel for what they are before we blow them up and do weird things with them. <laughs> but that's, um, as people have commented, like one of the cool things about Torg is putting the chocolate and the peanut butter and mixing them all up. So it's like, okay, we're probably going to need to move that forward in the list just so people have something to latch on to. And that'll have more of the beta stuff and more of the cross realm uh, adventure. And then we'll, we'll kind of get back into the other year one stuff because man, you only get to do year one once. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. Uh, so that would be, we're not sure exactly exactly where that would fall, but it would be um, probably still within uh, or at the first half of yeah. uh, the Cosm releases. Um, so that's just, just so everybody is aware of that. Uh, this one, I'm sure, uh, will spark a lot of discussion, and, and I wanted to... Oh, um, actually, I just want to ask Daryl one thing. Do we want to float that, that trial balloon about what we were talking about? I have no idea what you mean. Oh, okay. okay, well, <laughs> then we won't. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you could possibly be talking. <clears throat> Whatever. <laughs> Anything about that? Well, I'll send. I'll send signals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Two other people read semaphore. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, all right, I'm going to uh, put this question up because I think uh, it's an important one for us to just sort of hit early on in the evening. Um, and I think it's going to spark some good maybe to some more questions. Uh, so Patrick asks, now after having some discussions about exclusive promo cards, physical strategy, can you tell us what you've learned during this case? Contents of another box. So a lot to to sort of chat about that. And I want to I wanna get started on a couple of things. Um, so uh, just to, one thing that I, I kind of want to uh, throw out there is, you know, I, I want to make sure that everybody realizes that the the genuine plan um, when when we created uh, the, uh, the survival box was we think this is a solid box and we think that people are going to like the stuff in it. Um, you know, some of the things that came up were surprises to us, frankly. Uh, honestly, um, you know, I think like the dice and I read four cosms before people started to say, no, I don't need more dice because, you know, I, when I'm playing Torg, I need three D twenties to myself personally. That's me. Oh, am I still, yeah, your your video's out, and you're kind of you're a little bit distorted. Yeah. Oh, I think we just lost. Yeah. Did we lose them completely? Oh, Coming there's... back. Here we go. Uh, checking now. How am I doing? That's better. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. So one of the problems is when my cat's uh, paw bumps the F1 key, it opens <laughs> a new window with Chrome Help. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering what was happening. I was like, is this my problem? Is why I don't. Um. That's uh, my, my cat likes to mess with my keyboard. So um, yeah, and and <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, and I get I get that. So, but the the thing is, for me, I would have thought uh, that having more dice, specifically Torg dice, would have been um, a thing. Just and and that's just an example. I'm not telling people no, you have to want uh, more dice. I'm saying that that's why it was a... And there are like that... Uh, I think that soundtrack for me is such a great response in the... Um, we, we really 
appreciated that uh, that people responded well to some of the previews that we did of the the God Box soundtrack. So we, you know, we thought, yeah, people yeah. are going to want that, and that seems to make sense. So, so it's things like that where we really thought, and and also I I want to say that while it's true that some people have said. I don't want this or I don't want this in in a survival box not necessarily universal and and we can't assume you know as as creators we can't assume that the people who are silent agree with the people who are talking that's something that we have to be a little careful about so we can't just say oh every everybody by which I mean four people are saying this uh, so we have to um, those are things that we do take into account when there are four people they are speaking for more than just them mm -hmm. and we realize that as well um so the things that i would say that we have learned you know the is uh to some extent we want to be a little more clear up front um as far as why you should want the survival you know the the box right. uh, because it'll be a different a different box uh, for the Nile Empire. I don't know. Have we said what what we're calling the box for the Nile Empire yet? I don't know if we have. Um, I don't know, but it, but it better have a a onk on the side that's been burnt away. Right. Like I, I think <laughs> at least in pre production we're calling it the sarcophagus. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been thinking of it as yeah. Uh, well, now that's the cyber papacy. No. <laughs> right. So, yeah, and, and to Eric's point, you're going to see a lot of experimentation as we're as we're doing these. Like the Nile Empire one's going to look different, just because you know, a we're going to have you know more materials you know to to pull from for stretch goals, and two, you know, we're always judging like, all right, what do what do people like? What do people not like? You know, what's been a surprise? You know, either way, and we'll have just we'll keep adjusting and hopefully, you know, we'll get better and better and better every time. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes the, the key is, and, and some people have asked this, will there be a box for everyone? And the answer is yes. Uh, frankly, from a packing perspective, it makes sense for us. It makes sense for you, for us to offer some way for you to get a bunch of stuff at once and not have to do a la carte because that that creates a hassle for everybody um you know but they want to do a la carte they're going to want to pick and choose just yeah. exactly the things that they need and yeah. that's fine uh, we want to make that possible yeah well that was our goal early on and that's why like the book levels there with the add-ons and we kind of knew some of these add-ons aren't going to appear until we get some unlocks or whatever and that's why we wanted to assure people like all right if you really want the cards, it's going to be okay. Everyone, you know, we're we're pretty confident that those are going to get there. And if you just want the book, that's okay. You know, great. Right. You know, we we want that too. You know, because I, I mean, I'm a writer. I don't, you know, I don't make a lot of money, so I got to be pretty careful about what I order myself. So I totally get yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's one thing about working in the games <laughs> industry. You can't always uh, support all the kickstarters of your friend's stuff that you want. So yeah. It's, uh, Definitely an issue, but um, but yeah. As far as sort of specific things, um, I think that a lot of that is going to come out more after the Kickstarter because um, you know there are some things that we can assume right now, but we can't necessarily draw all the, all the conclusions until we have the full product list of here's what people actually chose in the game on store for their add-ons for their reward levels are going to be post Kickstarter assessments. Um, and, you know, we will definitely be doing that and we'll be uh, tweaking and our plans for, for the Nile Empire to, to make sure that it really is, um, you know, appealing to more people. Because uh, we know that even as it is, but hey, if there are ways that we can make it better and uh, more appealing to uh, everybody, that's fine. Uh, we'll we'll certainly do those things, um, yeah. especially because it's easier for us to just throw everything in a big damn box. So. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So so we'll look at ways to do that. Now I will say, 
you know, and and this was early on in the in the Kickstarter when there was sort of this discussion about well, there are these you've said that there will be things that aren't in the survival box. You know, those things are the acrylic blips, and as you've seen, that's a hundred fifty dollars <laughs> worth of uh, stuff. Um, and if we at the the outset, okay, this is a three hundred fifty dollar um, survival box. Trust us, you wouldn't. Have. There's no, wouldn't there's have. no reason for anybody to trust us yeah, on that. Yeah. Um, and and certainly not everybody's going to want every piece of acrylic that that we're putting out. And you know, some people are will, will prefer theater of the mind, and that's fine. Uh, so they're going to want different stuff at the table. Um, you know, but but something like that, we knew we couldn't say. All right, we're putting everything in in the survival box because because it was just uh, <laughs> Jeremy, um, you're uh, my kind of guy. We'll give it to y'all. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jeremy, yeah, I, I get that. Um, uh, we that's that's why we sell the add-ons. But uh, but yeah, that's it's that balancing act is tricky, and and that's I think of the things that I've personally learned from this Kickstarter. Oh yeah, yeah. People were asking, are they double sided? They are. Oops. Ah, sorry, I'm camera stupid. So yeah, basically, one side is is a smooth gloss, and the other side is a semi gloss, a little rougher, so it'll land well on maps and things. Cool. Um, so uh, so yeah, the the big thing that I have learned uh, from this Kickstarter is is very much the as as Daryl shows off the the blips, yeah, that's the the eighty millimeter. That's Oof. the eighty millimeter, yeah. That's means yeah, that we really have some big monsters. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Daryl, you keep distracting me. Let me finish my point here. Uh, <laughs> um, is uh, is really that uh, you know people want to see. Um, ahead of time okay this is the stuff that's going to be in the survival box and and that they want to be clear on that um and uh something that will be that will be like a satisfying thunk uh you can l watch the marcus and michael <laughs> yeah there you go uh watch because they threw them around a bunch uh <laughs> Is that is that a right. Babylon Five shout out? It made a most satisfying. <laughs> I hope so. I, that's uh... <laughs> all right. Uh, let's move on to the next question. More story stuff with response to the axiom shifting. Why and how would Barack uh, Baraka shift the axiom level? Would this be behind a behind the scenes type event, or would it be part of an adventure? And uh, Tim, I'm hoping you got that we uh, answered number two already. Yeah, it's, yeah, too. So the interesting thing, so where this whole axiom shift came from is we've actually known High Lords, it costs a lot of dang energy, but High Lords can do this. And so, so much of our meta plot comes from us going, all right, why doesn't this thing happen? Or what happens if it does? See example, Darkhold. What does happen if you, you know, nuke a storm bridge? Well, so, <laughs> so, and this was the same thing, right? If anybody would w want to boost an axiom, Barakal wants to boost his social so he can get control of his people. Like, he's, the biggest thing hampering him is, you know, he's got to be the biggest, strongest guy right in front of them to motivate them to do anything. And with a better social axiom, it would make, you know, his role as the SAR so much easier. So, why wouldn't he devote some energy into doing that? Well, I mean, one, it'd be super costly. Two, there's not a lot of ways to work that into an adventure, right? Especially early in the game. And this was where we first started talking about it. We're like, oh man, it'd be cool to do this and have it be a thing that people could interact with, but we couldn't quite figure out how. Um, and so when we had a slot and we're like, okay, we need something kind of cool and big at 175, and I was thinking, all right, this would be a good way to test the waters on this, right? To, like to bring it out because it does require some changes and some effort if we're going to go down this path. So it makes sense to tie it to a you know milestone. It's like, okay, great, we'll do this, and then we'll reach out to the community and see, all right, like what do you guys think? Is everybody like, yeah, 
let's change this? Or is everybody like, no, <laughs> what are you doing? Don't touch it. Like, we want to know. And that, that lets us, when it comes time, to pull the trigger on that adventure because there would be something for the Storm Knights to do and all that. Like, you can wait it, you know, as you do it. Like, all right, we're pretty sure you're going to succeed and stop it. You know, now your personal game, it might blow up. And you're like, oh, crap, all right, now we've got a different... <laughs> now we've got a different social axiom. What does that mean? Or, you know, when I said the tech axiom, like one of the potential backfires could be like, well, you get the extra tech axiom, but you also get more, you get the extra social axiom, but now you, but you also get some more tech axiom and they get a little bit more tools. Not many more. It wouldn't make a huge difference, but it would, it would change some things, including, you know, the GM screen and stuff like that. So I think it's super interesting personally. Uh, I get that people are super leery about it, and that's kind of why we wanted to put it out there and see, like, all right, what do you guys think? Is this is this a plot we should pull the trigger on, or should we just kill it dead early on, and we'll see how the war goes? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I think that, that part of that is it's important that we have one of the options be, no, the Storm Knight yeah, stop yep. it. And and if that's the the general feeling, um, it makes it easy. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah. Right, but and that's also like a that's a that it's a type of victory for the community too, right? Because it's like, hey, look, we hit this we hit this milestone. We got together. We did this. All right. There's going to be all sorts of ways that the community is going to affect the meta plot. This is one kind of way. The surveys are another kind of way the convention games that we do or another type of way. We're looking at all sorts of different inputs, you know, to bring into there and kind of twist and turn that meta plot. And that's why we kind of laugh every time we talk about the plan, because we know there's going to be all this input coming in and that's going to make things different. But to me, like, that's what makes it exciting and fun. It's like, well, like, I know what Barrett Kyle wants to do, <laughs> whether that's actually how it goes down or not. And then, and if it doesn't, all right, what does he do about that? Like that's where the stories get really exciting. So, and as people are saying in the comments, so every time we do something like this, like in the God Box, there's there's sort of an assumed, okay, it probably went this way, and in the canon that is going to be the base stories, you know, we're assuming that this happened, and Lanala is not dead, <laughs> yeah, and so on. But it could go the other way, and then we've got like a little bit like, all right, in your game world, this could happen. And that's why it's a Cosmverse, right? Like there's all these different worlds where different things happen, and there will be some adjustments to make, you know, down the line. But it's not like Veracra immediately becomes Torg when that happens. But your living land sure just got changed, and that's totally, you know, that that's the fun part, you know, and how how all those game worlds interact. And then when we get the feedback and say, wow, it turns out 75% of everyone killed Lanala. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> All right, I guess we're going to have to make some updates in the main world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, speaking of, let's go with this one. I'm looking forward to the God Box. So happy an adventure based in the living Love land. Is exciting. Yeah. Can we expect this type of grand? Kickstarter. If so, is there any chance we will also see a new official adventure, something like the Destiny Map Trilogy, as players touring the entire world are part of the next one? Um, love the new Living Land, but I really want new players to spend some time in different realms and get that Torg feeling of mixing and mashing. So, John uh, or uh, James, I hope you uh, got some of that second part in uh, the talk about the Core Earth uh, plans. That right. We were, that and, we, that's, and that's why it's that really it up, is because people are craving that, you know. And it's also going to take us a little longer than we expected to get all of the individual costumes out. So it's like, all right, you know, live and learn on that. But yes, the plan is for every cosm to have its, you, yeah, the grand tour adventure that takes you to like all the highlights in that cosm, uh, and lets you really get to experience. Like, okay, man, this is to us the quintessential Nile Empire mega adventure. Right, this is the quintessential cyber papacy mega adventure. Um, so you know what it means when you mash these up later, and we're going to do the mashup 
sooner rather than later. Yeah. And, you know, the the other sort of com comment that I'll throw in a, uh, about that is, as you've seen with some of the Delphi missions for this uh, particular uh, Kickstarter, um, even even some of the writers we're bringing in for the Delphi missions are starting to to do some mixing and matching right. in their one shots, and and that's a a good place for that kind of yeah. feel, yeah. definitely. And that is purposeful. We're 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 kind of inviting them, like yeah. In, in the very first Delphi missions, we were like, okay, when you when you pick a cosm, set it in the cosm. I think we had one there was some mixing in, but we kind of wanted like let's keep them distinct because we have to establish what they are before mm -hmm. you know we start blending them so that you know what the flavors are and yeah now in this one there were there there's definitely more interaction although it's still pretty heavily living land you know but that's what we want right and yeah and i'll give you even a hint what the what our um, mega crossover one's going to be so if you've been paying attention to the materials you know there's this um the tunnel system that there's a, a land below in the living land, and then there's the land between the underground over in Isle. And we've even mentioned, like, hey, these caves aren't just in these two places. They're happening all over the place, even under core earth. And no one really is like, why in the hell would this be? Like, where are all these caves coming from? And why do they all connect and all that? Our big Cosm crossover one, you can pretty much bet is going to deal with that head on. Interesting. All right. Uh, what are the current plans for more fiction? Has there been a decision when to release the adventure from last year's Gen Con yet? Will the cards that were in the package dice last time but not in the cargo box? Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff here. Be with the dice in the survival box. How will the acryl eclipse be blip, blips be packaged? Will they be loose? All right, let's go down this line. Current plans for more fiction. I don't know if we could talk. <laughs> yeah. About that so, right. Let's just say I, I don't. That's I think that's one of the few that we can't talk about. There are, yeah, top, there uh, are top men working on that. Top men, <laughs> literally, literally, our top man is working on that. Uh, uh, so there are p current plans for more fiction. How about that? Uh, has there been a decision when to release the adventure? So the biggest holdup on that is we're missing one map for it, and that has not been a priority because we've had to do our other Kickstarter stuff. Um, pretty much the second I get a gap and we've got the time to get that map in, then we'll be able to release it. Because like, the adventure is printable and done, but it, it would look goofy with just a giant square block that says map here. You know, <laughs> and it's like, probably not going to release that. Uh Will, I can speak to this one, will the cards that were in the package dice last time but not in the cargo box be with the dice in the survival box? Uh, the answer to that is uh, no, we still have a ton loose of dice. loose dice. Uh, so those are what are going in the box. But here's what I will tell you. We now have those cards. We have a stack of them uh, sitting in the warehouse. So if you backed the core, uh, core rules Kickstarter and... Um, feel like you would like some of those cards, uh, you should contact me and I will get some sent to you. Yeah. Uh, that That is something I can do. And the other thing is we'll have those when we go make our convention rounds. So if you happen to be at a yeah. convention, come up to us, say hi, say, hey, I kind of want a card. Okay, you got them. Yeah. And if you're not going to be at a convention, uh, then yeah, make, make Eric mail them to you. <laughs> uh, so... Sorry, I pushed my cat out of the way for a second. Uh, let's get the next one up. Uh, so then, uh, how will the acrylic blips be packaged? Can you, Daryl, can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a baggie with a, a top on it, and they're just going to be... It's not going to be... Not quite like this. Oh, man, I can't tell where my camera is. Not quite like this, but something a little bit like that with a fold-over and a tab so that a store can hang them up on a on a rack. So they will be loose. They won't be in a box or anything like that. It will be a bag. This is the current plan. Sometimes plan changes, but yeah. 
All right. Uh, here's a very straightforward question with uh, a lot of baggage. Directive <laughs> number two, has anything changed? <laughs> 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 no, don't light things on fire. Come on, guys. <laughs> Is that all? Don't okay. burn the world. <laughs> Nothing has changed. We want we want some core earth left when we're done. I really hope that so when the backers were there, you know, we were we were talking about like, hey, what any directives you want to add? We came up with that one, <laughs> and uh, everyone laughed when I said, okay, because that's going in the book, and everyone laughed. So I think they thought I was joking. <laughs> you know, I'm not joking. <laughs> when stuff like that comes up, oh yeah, it's going in. <laughs> All right. Curious to see what people will make a directive for when it comes out. Oh man. Uh, Martin asks, will the new miracles from the living land use the full spirit axiom of that concept? Some of them, yes. Uh, just... Most Let's of them what... are not like, yeah, most of them aren't like, you know, 24s. They're they're in that mid-range, what we call the useful range. <laughs> and then there's a few of the, the heavier hitter ones that that go way up. And then there's a couple that are that yeah, take the full advantage of it. And you're not gonna see those very often. And we also tied some of those into, like, there's a, another property of the living land that, because its spirit axiom is so high, there are certain miracles that anyone with faith, faith can just do. Just like anyone with faith can try to ward in and, you know, you know I believe, go away, vampire. Like, it, it, anyone anywhere can try that. In the living land, there are more of those. And some of those really, really high spirit axiom ones are those. Now, those are also very, very, very difficult and can have catastrophic consequences if done wrong. So the uninitiated non jacots probably don't want to try them, but they can. <laughs> and the, the, the other thing, too, is that that once you're getting up into that 20 range for, for spirit, a lot of that is now you're starting to increase the scale of what it's capable of. Like the, <laughs> the, the miracle that Barakad did to destroy Seattle. Seattle, of course, Seattle. You know that's that's a twenty-four, um, but we're not going to make a, a miracle or a ritual called that um, because it wouldn't get very much um, use in play, and that's kind of the important thing that uh, a lot of people should realize is that these books are going to be really focused on what you get during play. So, like. I'll just I'll use an example from the Nile Empire. Nile Empire, we're going to have engineers. They're going to do some, you know, neat stuff in my opinion. But all the stuff about building buildings and all that, they still do that, but we don't give any rules for it cuz who's building buildings? Cuz we're not going to stop the game session to build a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. Mad about Seattle, but come on. <laughs> so I like this is why we've offered you know like destroy your destroy your city <laughs> as a thing. Like I totally can't wait to blow up Tucson. It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Uh, are the tribal boundaries going to be more defined than in the core book, or does the concept of a boundary even fit in their social axiom? Interesting theoretical question. We go a lot into the clans and how they don't get along with each other and what it means to be part of the clan um, in terms of physical boundary locations. Now they're pretty nomadic. Like there are big blocks like, oh, hey, the Mistwalkers are mostly on the West Coast and the Gold Suns are mostly in Mexico and the Red Jaws are mostly along the East Coast and the Blue Spines are mostly down in Florida you know, and stuff like that. But those tribes, they're they are very nomadic. They, they get mixed up. They can go anywhere. And part of that is so GMs have the freedom to be like, man, I would really like some red jaws to be here and, you know, reckon some stuff. So, yes, there are red jaws here. Like, the, and you can keep those, pro you know, properties without, you know, without hurting your brain, essentially. But we, we, give, we do give it a... a a kind of broad geographical, like here's where the concentrations are, but beyond that, they mix up pretty tightly. We definitely don't have to. 
Ottawa's doomed. <laughs> um, what was? What did I just blow up, Dean? In honor of, uh, in honor of um, exploring the storm. Oh yes, Saskatchewan. Saskatoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we just uh, yeah, so, yeah. we're blowing up Saskatoon. Right, because because those guys are awesome. I'm like, all right, here's your reward. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, you know, it, it, just as a segue, quick segue there, the location of backers did have an impact on where certain yep. cosms are going. <laughs> yeah. So, so we actually, uh, just so you know, we we are able to take the. Uh, uh, take the the backer information from the first Kickstarter and map it. World, and so we looked at that as we were planning some of the the updates. It does, yeah, it does. It does. Like I say, when I was saying before that there's a bunch of you know inputs that feed into how that war metagame plays out. That's another one. <laughs> yeah, like, like we could have gone the cyber papacy. We could have gone into Brazil or Argentina, but. There are more backers in Rio than there are in Argentina. So, yeah. well, I thought, and I thought the biggest one was Australia. Like, yeah, there's a lot of was, people in Australia. I, was it, that was a surprise to us. We got a lot of love from Australia. So you guys get your stuff wrecked by a giant <laughs> infected, you know, beast. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, we've gone through everything in the Q and A. So I'm starting to pull things out of the uh, the chat. Uh, so here we go. John K asks, "Do you consider the Living Land Kickstarter to have been successful enough to the point that other Cosm Realm books will all be box set Kickstarter events?" Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So, uh, so oh man, the King track. Yeah. Oh no! It looks like the Q and A. More people have added things to the Q and A since uh, <laughs> since I last did. Yeah. So so I'll I'll jump back and forth now between the chat and the Q and A because these are things all things that have been added during the course of this chat. Okay. So we'll keep we'll hit everything in the Q and A. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I would say yes, it has been successful enough that we'll we'll right. continue to do box sets. We're gonna, yeah we're gonna tweak it as we go, but well so yeah. I think we're all OCD here. So we really want to, once we start a thing, we kind of want to finish it out for the Cosms at least. And then year two mm -hmm. might look completely different, you know, but right. now, I mean, and of course certain catastrophic things would change that. Like if this did not do very well, well, yeah, we got to scrap that plan and try it again. But right now we're, we're hitting the sort of solid numbers to be able to like, okay, we can kind of consistently do this, Years waves the you know in a very similar way, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and and I just want to say uh, you know just generally thank you all so much yeah. for that. Uh, one well, of the yeah. things, so look, just one of the reasons that one seventy five is an important milestone um, is because well that's about half of the original Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and having a supplement hit half of the original, that's a big deal. Like not a lot of things do that. Um, so we're, we're very, very appreciative yeah. of the, the things that you do. Uh, if you want to know about space gods, watch the previous chat. <laughs> <laughs> I did dump some stuff on that. Well, and that, yeah. and that might be the other reason I've been like super hesitating on the, it's, it's the map is the big one, but that other adventure has got a lot of stuff that kind of gives it away on where we're going with the space gods. And I think that's mostly parsed out now. So, but like, I'll get that map and get that book out. Like as soon as it's not going to hurt our Kickstarter delivery, essentially. Um, yeah, that's uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, like I, I bounced back and forth between uh, chat and Q and a questions. So I'm gathering questions from chat and I'll keep posting stuff from the Q and a. So Frank asks, are there expanded rules to the miracle system or does the living land book just have new miracles? So it is mostly new miracles, but I, I sort of intimated that because of the high spirit axiom, there are more miracles that can be cast untrained or invoked untrained, I should say. So that does add a kind of new layer to it, but the grammar is exactly the same and that's on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Where, where we would, 
mess around with things is in perks. I mean, we, we have miracle spells. They work that way. That's the way they will work. But if there are certain situations where we want to tweak things a little bit, then we'll do a perk for it that modifies how we do that. And that's only for specific and usually thematic reasons. Next chat question. Um, this is for me. I think it's uh, in reference to Origins. Uh, John K asks, does that mean I can still have some input with the Burden of Glory scenario next month? Um, possibly. Uh, if you report it on the forums, you know, until mm -hmm. it's in final layout, there's there's still the possibility yeah. that we can. Um, yeah. So, well, and I will say we mostly so we we've tabulated a lot of it, and and some of it's really worked into the current book. So, yeah. But you know that said, there's always nudges that can happen. So, yeah. You know, still worth playing, and you definitely that means you definitely want to solve the mystery rather than save the people. <laughs> Spoiler alert, everyone. <laughs> Uh, this next one is uh, is interesting. I think there's, um, yeah, there's no, uh, John, just follow up. I know there's no survey specifically for that adventure. Um, just uh, send, you know, post it on the forums. Uh, that is the best best way for us to, to see it. Because um, Deanna is always there. Yeah. Well, not always, but frequently there. If, if, uh, if this is Burden <laughs> of Glory, yeah, the last page of that was the survey. And you're supposed to like oh. send it in to us, you know, because it was secret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once it goes, once it goes live as a PDF, we'll put a, a proper survey up for it. Uh, okay. And then, uh, so here's an interesting one that I, I kind of want to put back on the audience. Uh, is there a pecking order of power among high lords? We know Gauntman is the most powerful, but who is the weakest or mid level? It's, well, Thorian, I think, would be the weakest. <laughs> <laughs> you have a better, you have a better choice. <laughs> so, well, and here's the thing with the high lords, and this is my humble opinion, right? Is there, <laughs> there's different, there's different types of strength, yes. right? Like if you put them in a wrestling ring and have them fight, Baraka is my money is on Baraka, and like Uthorian's probably number two. In that. However, you know, the odds of it, you know, being determined by a wrestling match are very low. And it's like, hey, sure, you know, Reishi Kanawa physically isn't as imposing as some of the others. But, and yet, you know, Pan Pacific is getting stuff done, you know, a lot of stuff done. So the, that they're all going, when we, stat them out because you guys are going to have to battle them. They're all going to be very different, right? Like, like Barrow Kaw is a physical brute. You're going to have to take him down with punches. You know, some of the other high Lords, that is not going to be how it goes, right? Like, you know, you, you, you won't be able to just shoot the gaunt man and be like, ha ha, we got it. You know, it's they're They've got different takes on different powers. Um, Okay. Huh. Uh, anyone that thinks Mobius is the weakest in any way is so wrong. <laughs> I think if anyone can take the God Man, my money's on Mobius. Yeah. Uh, I'm not biased, though. <laughs> I mean, I would say you know, there's certainly a lot of stuff going on in uh, Tharkold uh, that that oh. is they're they're kind of punching each other, and that's yeah. a big problem. So that's going to well, be fun. I, once yeah. once we figured that part out, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and that's and that's the funny thing about actually, Okay. People probably some people probably don't know what we're talking about here. Oh yeah, it's true. So, so I don't know. Here's the thing: um, by the end of year one, Cranot is gone. Mm -hmm. Guest is basically waiting to see who deserves to be the High Lord, and it's between Jezreel, uh, the President of Russia Volkov, Volkov. and Duke Thrachen. Three-way split. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, you're fighting over just a wasteland, so you know, I there's guess stuff in that wasteland. There's though. a lot of stuff. There's there. stuff in that wasteland. Don't be dissing on, <laughs> don't be dissing on Russia. Come on. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, more I'm dissing on Tharkold than on Russia, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, uh, Frank uh, asks, and this is sort of the, I see this as kind of the opposite of the power creep question. Mm -hmm. um, I foresee a stagnation issue with higher level characters. Perks become more expensive as you gain them. Skills and attributes are more expensive. Clearance level XP range grows per level, but the five XP gain per act remains static at all levels of the game. Do you see this as an issue? So if you guys want to speak to that, uh, that would be perhaps something to just talk about that design I'll, philosophy. I'll let Daryl handle that one. Yeah, so that's that. That's sort of essentially that is necessary, you know, because because the costs are going to go up if the all the ranges don't expand as well. You're you're gonna get you're gonna get in trouble fast. And also, we know like so some people aren't gonna be playing this game that often, but some people are gonna be playing it, you know, every week for five years, and. If they outgrow the game too fast, then we're roast. So uh, I don't think there's. Wouldn't want them. Yeah. Wouldn't want them taking out the Gaunt Man and your the end of year one. Yeah. No. I don't. So as for stagnation, so there's a lot of choice in there, right? It's like you can be saving up for that big thing, and the nice thing is, even if even at the higher levels, when you're saving up for that big change. You're still talking every three, four sessions tops. I mean, that beats the hell out of D and D, right? At high levels. Um, and if you are like want, you can start fidgeting on the lower stuff, like skills. You know, you'll, there's a lot of levers to pull. So. Yep. And yeah, and as somebody noted, I mean, it's your game. At a certain point, you'd be like, all right, guys, we're just jumping to gamma clearance. Here's 500 XP. It's off we go. I mean, you can. It doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, uh, Devnal uh, on the chat asked earlier, on the raising of the social axiom, would the High Lord realize raising it will give him more control of his no, people? I think, it's an interesting I, question. I think that High Lords get how reality works, right? Like, that's a prerequisite to being a High Lord. Barakah's not dumb, right? Like, he's, you know, he's not a stupid brute. Like, he gets what he's doing, he gets the power that he's stealing, and he understands how reality works. So, yeah, I absolutely think that they would understand it. Is anyone else having a hard time hearing me? I, I can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry, Adam. Uh, okay, I'm just letting everyone know you'll be able to rewatch immediately after. Um, so hopefully, I don't know, try, yeah, it's weird. <sighs> yeah, we, we, we're still trying to figure out this Kickstarter live thing. It's um, technology. Ah! We, well, it's, it's, it's feature poor in certain ways. And so it's hard to tell sometimes exactly what's going on. It's like it's got a <laughs> low social axiom, but a high tech. <laughs> All right. Uh, Okay, so yeah, and so Dev, no, I get what you're saying. You're like, would he understand? I get X, you know, with the night home. Well, he doesn't have that fine a control on it. He just knows he needs more, right? So, like, like bumping it by one is the first step, and it maybe doesn't make a huge difference, you know. But like, he knows he's getting closer to there. All right, uh, next. Q and A question. I asked this in the comments, but my bad wording got the can. No POD response. My fault. Sorry about that, Jeff. Uh, number one, will can the original full drama deck be released as PDF for those of us not wanting a three three foot thick plasticized RFID tag deck? Um, <laughs> we also don't want to drop thirty dollars a deck every time too many cards are lost, damaged, or destroyed. In the last chat, uh, live chat, you mentioned something about a deck resource for Roll Twenty Net. Is that going to happen? And if so, when? How will it be implemented? So uh, let me answer the first question myself. Uh, thinking about the PDF. We have generally steered away from um, PDFs of cards, uh, and that's across multiple product lines. Um, uh, the uh, the issue for me is that um, you know we're trying to present it in a in a particular way, and we we want to make the uh, we want to make the PDFs available to people who do the initial back so that they can get playing right away. Uh, but once the product is out there, we 
I'm proud of. You know, it's oh. that said. Oh my God, Daryl. <laughs> Sorry, that said, I actually would I would push for yeah. I think we should put the deck so. I absolutely yeah. and we should. So that's a that's a conversation we can continue to have and and that's uh, may end up doing um but that's it's probably not within the scope of this Kickstarter. We can examine that after after and, and figure that out. Uh but one thing I will say that is uh, a consideration um if you if you follow uh, sort of the business of drive through RPG and one bookshelf on one of the things that they are working on it for the future um, may be something that we can tap into and we can't talk too much about it yet but I, I just want to, to let you know that yeah. that options for cards may increase in the future uh, just just to let you know yeah, because it, um, it's something we want to do because we know like that's one of the barriers to getting in a tour is most games, you just need a book. Torg, you need a book, and you need the deck. So, you know, we 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 definitely want to reduce that barrier anytime we can. It's just a matter of doing it in a way that's going to be useful and have quality and, you know, be sustainable. Yep. And then uh, the second part about the Roll20 support, uh, Deanna, you want yeah. to talk about that? That the deck is done. Um, I've got the. Uh, there's going to be actually three decks I put in there. One's the normal one. The second one is a doubled up deck with, um, but not extra master plans or glories. Um, and also, I did put in one that was the normal deck with two less glories, just in case that's the way you wanted to play with that. Um, so that's finished. I still have to get it up to the guys at Roll20, um, and they have to figure out what I did wrong. <laughs> and you then, then, we, then we'll have it up on the on the marketplace. I don't think it'll be too much longer. So, uh, yeah. So, so that is something we are working on separately. Should be up soon. Um, thank you, Deanna, for for all yeah, the work you're doing on sure. that. Sure. Because boy, am I glad I'm not having to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. And. Mm. And yes, we kind of wanted we kind of wanted to be able to bundle that in with this Kickstarter, but we just can't. Like that's just not a thing that's allowed. So, you know, if, if you're out there, like, oh yeah, you know, like, oh man, why didn't you guys just give those decks away as part of this? We we hoped to, but it doesn't that it doesn't work like that. We can't do it. So sorry. Okay. Um... The next uh, question from the chat, Jeremy asks, what's the timetable to have all the Cosms released? Uh, so we're still pushing for two years, I'm hoping. Yeah, if we can. Um, and the, the Core Earth uh, thing that we talked about earlier, that may nudge it, uh, yeah. but we're also looking for ways to accelerate as well. Right. Yeah, we, we do have multiple people now working on books. Um, and there's, I mean, right now we've got four Cosms in various states of progress. Right. So, mm -hmm. But we also don't want to rush it because, yeah. you know, that's one of the things that we want to be very careful about this time, sticking our time, getting it right, get, keeping everything coordinated. So and we really only get one shot to do the initial cost exactly exactly and then and th this was one of the reasons why i was so happy we got infiniverse because that takes some of the pressure off because it's like okay we can be doing these main products and all that but if people want to really go like exploring and are hungry for more content and we can you know provide there's there are other places for that and there's you know, I haven't gotten to check it out myself, but I hear there's some great stuff on there. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, asks, uh, once all the year one core Cosm books come out, how will further years be handled in terms of new character GM mechanical options? Once the base year one books are done, how metaplot heavy will the books be? Remains to be seen. I've got... <laughs> I say I've got outlines and plans, but you know, like we joke, 
the, they will probably be mutated by the time we actually get there. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of focusing on just on getting the Cosm books out at this point, so. Yeah, like I said, we've got an outline, it just may change. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, more from the chat. John Ellison asks, uh, and what tribe rules the white zone? Uh, oh, we do say, actually, don't we? Do we? Uh, oh, no, we don't. So the whole thing with the white zone is it is completely user-defined. Like, we just say, oh, we don't know what's going on there, GM, make it up. You know, we, we give a couple of possibilities. I think we kind of hint that the Mistwalkers are involved with it because the, the deep mist is really strong there. But it doesn't have to be. Like, it's very that, – that whole place is very GM choice. Right? Yeah. We give some ideas just so you're not completely left hung out to dry. But at the same token, we're not – we don't plan to – we don't plan to come back later and say, by the way, you were wrong about what was in the white zone. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of setting aside one area in each realm that we are, eh. well, okay, I want eh. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> there is one in the Nile Empire. There, there is one in the Nile Empire, so. I don't think it's always appropriate. Like, I mean, like, I think it's good to have blank space for people to fill in. But I like I don't want it to be too meta. Like, and by the way, here is the blank space to fill in. It's more like, <laughs> hey, like there's stuff going on here, here, and here, and you know we kind of left some, something fuzzy in this area. Man, go to town. You know, do whatever you want. But but I personally find it a little off-putting to be like, by the way, here's a mystery zone. <laughs> do whatever you want with it. That's what I'm buying a book from you for. You tell me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's and that's why it's important to have multiple people with input on the different products, right? It's like no singular like if there's a singular vision, the closest we've got is Shane Hensley's, right? We're like we're still following the star as we go on, but we've all got our own very distinct sort of yeah, inputs and attitudes and likes and dislikes. There there were things that Shane was sort of leaning towards and we kind of we convinced him otherwise, so and and there's still room for the community to push us too. Like, oh yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, so, Michael, hopefully we answered this for the most part. Uh, are there any plans for virtual tabletop support, fantasy grounds, etc.? Uh, the answer is right now. Roll twenty. Um, and uh, I I think I s a little bit in the previous chat. Um, as far as fantasy grounds go, the best way to get that to happen is to use the core tool set to run Torg there and uh, and let it show up in the that that's what you're running. Because um, Fantasy Grounds looks at those statistics to figure out what they should be hiring people to uh, uh, to develop. Um, so that's that's the big thing that I will say. We, we have been in contact with Fantasy Grounds, but it's definitely not... Um, it's still in the maybe phase. Right. As opposed yeah. to with roll twenty, we've actually got some stuff that's coming. So, yeah, and and a lot of that is is the difference in how those uh, just those platforms work. Yeah. Roll twenty, we can go say here, whoever wants to buy it, go ahead. Um, whereas fans, it really it really needs a uh, a, a kind of a base population. Um, to exist before we can we can push for it, uh, especially because we're not experts at coding that right. stuff. And, right. Yeah, and really, we're all for anything. So we we're going to try to support any community that is trying to play tour however we can. It's you know, meanwhile we're going to be making our game. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, last wave. Uh, asks any plans to add a new Cosm unique to Torg Eternity, and then several people said, "Please no." But I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask the question and see uh, see what you guys say. If something like that were to happen, it would probably be a year three or year four event because we've got a lot of ground to cover before we open up new cans of worms. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't personally like the idea. I mean, we're, if we if we got plans with Space Gods 
and we've got eight right now. Um, introducing another one down the line, unless it was a really cool idea. Yeah, and this is when you're. This is super early to talk about this, but yeah. where where I think stuff like that would come in is you know so. Original Torg was about the possibility wars, and Torg Eternity is about the possibility wars. And the, eventually, we will win or lose the possibility war. And when you're when you're through with that, then you move on to whatever the next thing is. And you're like, all right, we're not fighting a war anymore. What are we doing? That's the the discovery and exploration period. That's where you'd really want to dig into new concepts, in my opinion. So it's a long way off, but yeah, might the, be thinking about it. <laughs> the the plan for Torg is, I mean, as Shane put it, it's it's not a sprint. We're not gonna the plan isn't to do this in four years and get out. You know, like Savage Worlds has been going on for 20 years. And there's no reason Torg can't do. Right. All right. Uh next question from the chat. Uh lobby to have their city not be eaten by dinos. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, just 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 say, oh, I really don't want my city eaten. And I'll probably laugh and destroy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have noticed that um boy, when we when we debuted those year one maps, that the reality war is not going well uh, by the end of year one. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely. It's actually going, I think, pretty good, especially on the living lands. I mean, they they, they kind of got pushed back pretty hard compared to where they could have been. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess living land, definitely, but man. And Pacifica, man. <laughs> well, I mean, and we'll, but we'll see how the war is going when we get to yeah. those places. Like, we've got our plan, but plans change. Um, so the the other thing I will say, Dominic, is uh, as far as lobbying to have your city not be eaten by nanos, uh, please appeal to the uh, top level backer to <laughs> include your city when when they're deciding which ones to uh, destroy. <laughs> uh, that's, that's about all you could do. Uh, good luck. There's a major disappointment to both John Wick and myself that Arizona was not obliterated by the living man. We will try to fix this, the earliest opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and Callum's gets um, a mention in the living land, so that's all. Uh, just saying. <laughs> uh, here's a question that is two and three cosms down, down the road, respectively. Uh, the original Torg ended up with a very complex magic system. In my experience, that pushed people away from playing magic users. Are you guys going to keep the magic system as simple as it is? The grammar of magic will not change. Just like the grammar of skills will not change, the grammar of miracles will not change. You know, when we add things, it will be in terms of perks. It might be in terms of equipment, and there may be optional you know, options that we add, but in general, it's going to work the way it is now. And I know that that's going to be controversial because there's a lot of cool stuff in the original tour if you had the time to really engage with it. But we're, you know, Torg Eternity, the whole point is for it to be lighter, less entry barriers, and we're going to keep to that as much as we can. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Just because Frank just asked it and it is relevant, um, does this mean no character created spells? So, can you talk about character created spells? Nope. I can't talk about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to have to wait for aisle on that one. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, All just right. for the record, uh, there is stuff that Daryl does not tell me. <laughs> So if it's something like I've showed you that outline though. <laughs> I've showed you the outline. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh Roger uh has joined us from Germany where it is morning now. Um so good morning from Germany. What is the rough time frame for the rest of year one? So we sort of answered this a little bit, uh just to go that um so Yes, Nile Empire is next. Uh, so this year, um, we may get to another one this year. It's that, could be, that would be the hope. Yeah, it could yeah, be Isle, could be Portland. Would have to be 
perfect, I think, if we're going to make it by November. So. What, what you guys are going to see, you know, and you guys can be, you guys can be kind of, you know, timing us at home, essentially, is we're trying to get our production turnaround, talent, turnaround times down. Because the closer we can get that production turnaround, the more of these we can do. But the other thing that we're going to be paying attention to, and this could also change the structure of these going forward, is we, we don't want to kill people, right? Like if it's not going to be, if we're going to try to keep the scale of these the same, we can't, we can't do that many of them at a time because people just can't keep up. So, so we're 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 still kind of hoping for two years, you know, but. If it takes us six months to get this one out, that is not going to be true. You know, if it takes us four, all right, we could be in business. And we're there's a lot of changes behind the scenes on our production stuff that's going to make it quicker and easier as we go. So you, though, it, don't be discouraged by the timing early in these waves because we're going to get faster as we go. And if we get yeah, I'll faster, we're going to probably change our scale a little bit too. I'll see. Yeah, and I do want to say, uh, Nighthawk, uh, we will never be that fast. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think I think the fast <laughs> the fastest we are likely to get is um, squeezing in three per yeah. year. Um, so that's that is uh, you know that would be I think very speedy. It would mean that we would be able to wrap this up in the next in within the next two years. Um, and you know, so by 20, the end of 2020, uh, we would be able to, to wrap up year one, but that's, that's ambitious. Right. Um, and likewise, <laughs> the further, the future years aren't going to have, you know, eight different cosms to deal no. with. So right. that's when the timeline starts speeding up significantly. So, yeah. Cause, cause once you've got yeah. that core base for each cosm, then you can do the overlays and then the updates. And, and this is why we're um, doing everything timed at year one is because, I mean, if we couldn't do it, otherwise it, it, it had to be like this, if we were gonna, you know, maintain the, the quality that we're getting and not kill everybody trying to, trying to get these out. I mean, when you look at the original Torg publication schedule, it's insane. Like they got, insane. they got, <laughs> all six cosms out in 13 months and that includes at least one trilogy and i think about two two compilation advent, adventure compilations and i think the cassandra files was in there and yeah it was just it's not the early 90s <laughs> it's yeah. just well but there's i mean but there are a lot of people going a lot of different directions and one of the things that we want to do different this time is kind of keep the cats herded and kind of moving in a, in a singular direction. Yeah. yeah and, and also, you know, people are hopefully going to be buying this, you know, six, seven, eight years from now. And it's a little bit easier to have all the Cosm books set at the exact same time um, rather than, you know, the last Cosm book being three years into the, into the war or what have you. And yeah, it just wouldn't work out very well. Yeah. Um, okay. To wrap up uh, pretty soon here. So, yep, we got a couple more questions that are fairly quick. Uh, Abhishek asks, uh, so can we expect the different decks as Roll Twenty products? Um, there, yes, yes, and yes, ish. You're <laughs> on the spot, Deanna. Do it. Do it. There is there is an issue with doing expansions for card decks in Roll Twenty. And they have said that they're they're sort of looking at that eventually, but if if anybody knows how the roll twenty decks work, what we might have to do is actually just release them as an art um, art resources, and yeah. then you would add the the cards yourself. I mean, they're can you can you update a, a pack once people have already bought it? No, see that's the problem. You can't. So be, people can add art to a deck that they've already got. They can make a new card, add the... Uh, the uh, so yeah, that's how we'd have to do it. Yeah. But like we'd, we'd be able to say, put the, the new Living Land drama deck because that is intended to replace... Right, since that's a different the original one. drama deck. But like but the extra Cosm cards we'd have to do is extra. Right. 
Yeah, and and we we might have some idea of, of doing like we might might no, I don't know. I haven't talked to Daryl or anybody yeah. about other possibilities, but it's it's not straightforward. Let's put it yeah. that way. It's a challenge, but it's a challenge that we are dedicated to overcoming because yeah. we want people to be able to play the game. Yeah, it's not difficult to get the cards as resources into the game. It's just there would have to be a little bit of an extra step that people would have to do. All right, uh, last question. Uh, this is sort of a fun question to end on. Um, could we have a Cosm land in Atlantis since 70% of the Earth is underwater? Can we do an Atlantis Cosm? Could. Uh, I don't know if I'd do it as a separate. I'll say I don't know if I'd do it as a separate Cosm. I think we got other options here. But even if, well, and even if not, there were there were pocket Cosms and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. We totally right. do that. Yeah, oh, something to think about. Uh, okay, so... Um, Space cons. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nailed it, John. Thank you. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's really the, the big issue. There's no population underwater. Why would you have... Well, um, right, and we and we sort of have that, that problem with some of the Stella Network where we're like, I don't know, there's just a bunch of junk ocean here. What are we going to do with this? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we've um, got a plan for that, too. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. And thank you, Daryl and Deanna, for uh, for answering questions and hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. And as uh, as we said, the uh, this video will be immediately available for rewatch uh, on the Kickstarter page as soon as I stop the broadcast um so that's and then i'll post it on youtube in a little bit uh we're we're not we're at the point where we're coming close to the end so we probably won't do another big q a chat but uh it's possible as we're depending on how our schedules look we may do um should, kind of a countdown we should do a rap hangout. party yeah we should do a rap yeah. Party. yeah so so we may yeah. just it'll be very very informal uh but we may do a, a rap party um on Tuesday, uh, so if you if you want to plan for hanging out with us, that that may be something that we do. Uh, but yeah, so thank you all, and uh, we'll yeah. If you if you have more questions, uh, we'll certainly continue to answer. Yeah, if we're around, thank you all for the questions. Thank you all for the support. Thank you for backing. I saw a bunch, you know, some people adding it during this. Thank you all so much. We couldn't make tour without you, and we want to keep making tour. Yeah, and if you guys have questions, uh, go on the forums and ask away. I'm there way too much. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so, yeah. All right. And thank you all, and good night. Good night.